Good morning and welcome to Calendar Bay Church Online. I'm Pastor John Intoff and thank you so much for joining us for our online service today. While well, we're back after I was away for a week and came back to some uh, crazy uh, conditions here in Ontario as we have had uh, the effects of fires in northern Ontario and Quebec bring smoke into the area. And uh, really an item of prayer as uh, these wildfires continue to burn. I know it's close to my own heart as my uh, son Dylan is fighting fires in uh, Manitoba this summer. And uh, so something that we can bring as a prayer concern, uh, something that's affecting us both locally and right across Canada. Well, again, thank you for being a part of our service here at Calendar Bay Church. And there, there's a few ways that you can enjoy the service. One, you can do what you're doing presently, which is watching it online. And you can do that two different ways. One, you can join for the YouTube premiere, which takes place Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. And you can join with others uh, as you go to our YouTube channel and watch it with them uh, together. So that, that's kind of one way that you can do it. After that point, it's available at any time and you can watch it whenever you want. Uh, you can also join us for our in-person service, which takes place here at Calendar Bay Church, 10.30 a.m. And uh, we have uh, kids ministry uh, running until June, and then there's going to be a bit, of, a bit of a break for July and August. And our nursery is running every other uh, week. And so uh, whether you enjoy the service online or in person, we just appreciate that you're a part of our community here at Calendar Bay Church. Uh, just a few things to update uh, about things that are happening uh, here at Calendar Bay Church. Uh, number one, I have some good news and I have some bad news. Uh, the good news is, is, is that our high power soccer camp, which is planned for August, is, um, is full. It's, uh, it's uh, completely full. We have 100 kids already pre-registered for that. Um, if you would like to get on a waiting list, uh, if we're able to expand, if we get more staff, or, uh, you know, that uh, you would want to get on, there is a way of doing that by going to our webpage, calendarbaychurch.ca. Uh, we are looking for some positions, uh, some immediate, some for the fall. Uh, the immediate ones are we're looking for somebody to help with our uh, financial areas here at the church. We're looking for a treasurer and we're looking for our bookkeeper. Uh, the bookkeeper is a paid position. And uh, so if you're interested in either of those, you can talk to uh, me here at the church. Uh, the other is, is that as we prepare for fall, hoping to have a full roster of kids programs on Sunday morning and uh, looking for some volunteers to help with that. And so if that's something that's of interest to you, uh, please contact us here at the church and uh, we can get back to you about that. Uh, thank you for your ongoing support of Calendar Bay Church. And um, if you would like to give to the ministry of Calendar Bay Church, there's a couple ways that you can do that. Number one, you can mail your gift in, which is uh, to our mailing address, which is Calendar Bay Church, Box 218, Calendar, Ontario, P0H1H0. Um, again, that's Calendar Bay Church, Box 218, Calendar, Ontario, P0H1H0. The other way is to go to our webpage and you can go to calendarbaychurch.ca slash give and you can safely and securely give to the ministry uh, of Calendar Bay Church. Again, we just appreciate uh, your ongoing support and your faithful support of Calendar Bay Church. Oh, one thing else that I forgot to mention is, is that if you would like to check out a bulletin which has all the detailed information of the things that are going on uh, here at Calendar Bay Church, including uh, up to coming baptism service, uh, all you have to do is go to calendarbaychurch.ca slash bulletin and you can find all that information there. Well, today we want to uh, celebrate around the Lord's table. And in order to prepare our hearts for that, uh, we've got a great song. This song is called Man of Sorrows, and it is just a beautiful reminder of what Christ did for us. And so let's sing it and prepare our hearts for communion this morning. Stood accused Be 
This morning we do want to take time to uh, remember Christ's sacrifice on the cross for us. And, and I always like to take this time just to remind ourselves of, well, number one, the great gift that was given to us in Jesus Christ. And, and how grateful we are for the fact that Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins so that we could have uh, both life uh, eternal and abundant. And so that is just a, a beautiful promise of what took place when Jesus died for us, the forgiveness that took place and the guarantee of eternity with him and the hope that that gives each and every day. And we are so grateful for that. And it's great to remind ourselves again of what we have to be thankful for. And so just as we partake together, I'm going to encourage you where you are just to take a moment. And whether you say it out loud or say it in the quietness of your heart, Let's just remind ourselves of what we are thankful for. Because we do have so much to be grateful for. 
We have our families. We have our friends. We have this great community that we can be a part of, great country that we live in, um, you know, for the small blessings that come our way. Let's just take a moment in the quietness. Let's, let's thank God for those things. God, you are so good. Your word says that your love endures forever. And God, we thank you for the love that, uh, that reached down to each one of us. While we were yet sinners, while we were separated from you, your word says that you died for us. And so we di you died so that we could have life in you. And God, we are so grateful for the many blessings that you bring to us each and every day. And as we partake together, it's with a heart of gratefulness for all that you have done and what you continue to do. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And it is a hope that is an anchor to our soul. And it is a hope that ushers us in to eternity. And as we eat together, it is with grateful hearts. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat together. Jesus also on the night that he was betrayed, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents the new covenant that is in my blood. And every time you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. And we want to take a moment this morning just to be able to pray for the various needs in our congregation. And so I want you to be thinking where you are of what, what's concerning you today. Is it a health concern? Is it an emotional concern, a spiritual concern? Is it, a, is it for loved ones? Whatever it is, I want you to be thinking of that. And we want to lift those up to the Lord this morning. And, you know, even though it's across technology, we know that God is able to work in those situations. And so let's just take a moment and lift up our concerns to the Lord. God, again, we as we meet together, we know that you are not limited by time and space, and you can meet us wherever we are. And so, God, we want to take right now the concerns that we have in our hearts, and we want to just lay them at the feet of Jesus, knowing that you are able to minister knowing that you are able to do much more than we ever asked or imagined through the power of Jesus Christ. And so, God, if it's a physical need, we just want to lift that up to you. Some of us may have got, you know, bad news from the doctor this week, and we are just looking for you to be the healer in our lives. God, for those of us who are just going through depressing and difficult and anxious times, we give those problems to you. In knowing that your word reminds us that we are to be anxious for nothing and that when we give those things to you, that there is a peace that you can give that goes beyond our circumstances. And so, God, we look to you to bring that emotional healing that we need. God, we want to pray for loved ones that don't know you and that need a relationship with you and that, God, you would just be ministering in those people's lives, using us to be able to bring your message. And God, for the various other concerns that might be on our heart, we lift them up to you. Again, we know that you are the one who can take care of these needs. And so we surrender and we give them to you, looking for you to do your work. God, we are so thankful for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The shed blood of Jesus Christ that brings forgiveness and brings healing into our lives. And that in you, we, can, we trust in the fact that you are working everything out to that great and glorious moment when you will bring us into complete and utter healing when we are in your presence. So God, thank you. And as we drink together, it's with a sense of remembering and gratefulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's drink together. Well, we want to take the chance to, uh, to sing. No, well, it's not really a chance, but we just want to sing. And this song is just a reminder of what Jesus did and that our response is to praise the name of Jesus. And let's do that this morning. Jesus. 
Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. After a couple weeks away from this series, we're back into our series called Better. You know, we've been talking about how we can try to move towards God's better things. You know, we have uh, so many different choices that we can have in life. And so oftentimes it's choosing between good things. We have so many different good things that we can choose from. If it was just simply choosing between good and bad, uh, that would be a little bit easier. 
but because often we're choosing between looking for what is God's best, it can sometimes be a little bit harder. And God's word reminds us that there are things that we can choose that are better. And today we want to look at um, something interesting, and, and it's become quite a, an issue in modern society. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But there was a survey that was done in 1985. So 1985, that's like so long ago now. <laughs> Uh, doesn't seem so to me, but I was just finishing high school at that point, or I, I would have been out, I would have been in Bible college at that point, 1985. And there was a survey that was done, and it said that the average person had about 2.94 friends. And they did a, redid this study in about 2003. So about 20 years later, they redid the study and they found out that that number had dropped from 2.94 to 2.08, which means so basically we lost a friend, you know, because 2.94 around three, now down to about two. That was 20 years ago. And the trends continue to show that we have less people who are true friends and confidants. And what that resulted in is that um, there seems to be an overwhelming sense of loneliness that has been become a part of society. And this is part, we've discovered this through a number of studies that when looking at, you know, depression and all the other things that go along with that, that that was one of the key issues that went along with that. And you would think that in this time frame, that why is it that we are so lonely? We have so many different ways that we can stay connected with people. You know, uh, we have, you know, all these different social media things that seem to be ways of staying connected. And yet, these are not helping us stay connected. They are actually leading to a greater sense of loneliness. The existing evidence illustrates that we have a reason to be concerned about the impact of some technologies use on our relationships. And it is affecting our health. This is what it says. In a U.S.-based study, participants who reported using social media for more than two hours a day had about double the odds of reporting increased perceptions of social iso isolation, which is another fancy term for being lonely. Um, and that's in comparison to those who use social media 30 minutes per day. This has become such a big problem in North America that the U.S. Surgeon General just released in 2023, this is like brand new uh, stats that was released by the U.S. Surgeon General, which is the guy who's supposed to kind of take care of our, the general health of people. And so this study is called the Our Epidemic of Loneliness and Isolation. And so what they're, they're noticing is, is that this social, isol uh, social isolation is actually leading to physical health problems. So this has become a, not just a, a mental kind of situation, it is actually reflecting itself in people are getting sick and they are dying because of this epidemic of loneliness and isolation. And the, I just wanted to go through some national trends. Now, these are American studies, but usually in North America, there'll, there'll be a little bit of transfer. And so some of these states, although these stats are for uh, the United States, would still apply to us. And so here's some national uh, trends for social connection. So these are some differences from 2003 to the present. And so when it's talking about the average daily, uh, annual daily average in minutes, and so this is what it says, social isolation has increased by 24 hours per month. 
so that people are feeling much more isolated than they have in the past. Uh, household family social engagement has decreased by five hours per month and so all the connection of families as we've seen the stats of what has been happening to family dynamics that has now translated into five hours less for of social interaction uh, companionship has decreased by 14 hours per month and so what we're finding is, is that even people just hanging out with each other uh, has decreased. Uh, and then it goes on and it says social engagement with friends has decreased by 20 hours per month. So actually, no, the first one with 14 hours was, you know, kind of couples doing things together that kind of companionship stuff. And this is just generally hanging out with friends. That's decreased by 20 hours. Uh, Non-household social engagement. I'm having a hard time saying social. Social engagement has decreased by 14 hours per month. And so that's kind of um, those that are outside of our family systems. And so you can see that there is a general trend away from social connection with each other. Um, it was Britney Spears a number of years ago uh, that she, in her song, Baby Hit Me One More Time. I know you're <laughs> thinking, where is he going with this? She quoted this line. It says, my loneliness is killing me. And I don't think she was meaning that as a literal statement. I think she was thinking that it was kind of like, oh, my loneliness is killing me. That it's like it was such an ache in her heart. But really what they're discovering is, is that people's loneliness is actually killing them. Now this is uh, another stat. This is about lacking social connection. I don't know if you're gonna be able to read those, but uh, it says that uh, basically, um, it goes through air pollution, that's the bottom line, obesity, physical inactivity, drinking six drinks, a, alcoholic drinks a day, smoking up to 15 cigarettes daily, and then the most unhealthy factor by quite a staggering amount is lacking social connection. It is healthier to smoke 15 cigarettes a day. Now think about that for a second, okay? Just think about that for a second. We all know smoking 15 cigarettes is not healthy. It's not. It's a very unsafe thing to do and it's probably not a guarantee, but there's a high possibility you're throwing yourself towards lung cancer if you're smoking at that kind of rate. And we all know, even smokers know, that that's not healthy. And this is when we get to the stat that when we are not socially connected with people, as relationships break down, it's more unhealthy than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I remember hearing this quote from John Ortberg, and he was talking about eating healthy. And he, and he was talking about uh, social community or community within the church. And this is what he said, better to eat a Twinkie in community than broccoli alone. And this is the key point of this whole big study. It's, it's, it's a thick document, and you can actually, I googled it and I found it very simply, and you can actually take a closer look at it. It actually goes through quite an exhaustive plan that the, the American government is going to try to do in order to be able to stop this problem. Now, the Bible actually speaks about this, and today's message is called Better is Two. And we want to look at uh, some ideas that surround this. Again, this is from Ecclesiastes, uh, from what Solomon wrote, wisest man in the world. And, uh, and this is what he wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And we're going to look at it kind of in two sections. But first we're going to look at verses 7 and 8. And this is what it says. Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with, a, with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked. 
And why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. And so this guy, from an outside perspective, looks like he's a pretty successful guy. But it says that he has no connections. He, there's nobody that he is, ha, is doing anything for. He's just doing it all for himself. And he has come to the conclusion that this is just absolutely and utterly meaningless. And so this pas passage talks about loneliness. It talks about the emptiness of being alone. To go through life without any significant connections. The writer of, of Ecclesiastes says, this is just meaningless business. Why am I doing all these things? It talks about the futility of advancement without relationship. There's, if you're advancing and moving ahead in the company, but there is no one that you can enjoy that with, that this is a futile experience. And that ultimately, a selfish agenda is meaningless. You know, right now there's a song on the radio by, by uh, an artist, Miley Cyrus. And, and she talks about um, the, the idea of I, I, I can buy myself flowers, I can write my name in the sand, I can, you know, talk to myself for hours because I can love you, love me better than you can. And I've been thinking a lot about this song and you're probably thinking, why are you wasting your time thinking about Miley Cyrus songs? But I think this song typifies what society is trying to say. They're saying that I can be content within myself. That I can do all the things that other people would give to me and I can just do those things for myself. And I think that that's what the world is trying to sell us is that we don't need other people to have some kind of sense of fulfillment in our lives. And, and maybe they're right in some sense, in the sense that God is the one who ultimately brings fulfillment. And that if we seek to find it in anything else but God, uh, we're going to be... But God designed us to be in relationship. From the, You go back to the Garden of Eden. It's not good for man to be alone. That's the beginning of the human, uh, of human people, is our desire and our need to be in relationship. And the world is telling us, you don't need other people. All you need is yourself. And you know what we're discovering? It's not good to be alone. It's not good. And it goes on in this passage of Scripture, and it explains why two are better. Listen to what it says, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. It says, two are better than one. Because they have good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. It goes on and says this. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that because it, the Bible kind of takes, it's going with this two image and then all of a sudden it throws, this, always throws a three image in there. And we're going to talk a little bit about it. But the basic message of this passage of Scripture is, is that relationships are a top priority. That two is better than one. That we need to be in relationship with people. We are not designed to be out of relationship. We are designed, you know, when it talks about, uh, you know, and I mention this all the time, but it's, 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 it's foundational Bible stuff. Is, is that, what's, what is life all about? Love God, love people as yourself. It's all about relationship. And we need to be in relationship. We need a relationship with God. We need to be in relationship with one another. One of the key ideas of Scripture is, is that when we step into a relationship with Christ, we are placed in community. We are placed in the church. We are a part of His new community. 
And so in Scripture, as we look at that passage of Scripture from Ecclesiastes, lone wolf behavior is discouraged. You know, we talk about in North America about rugged individualism and that we, we can do this on our own and all these things. We are not designed for lone wolf behavior. You know what happens to most lone wolves in modern North American society? They burn out. Because we're not designed in order to be able to uh, do life alone. We are designed to be in relationship with people. Life is meant to be done together. I remember watching a seminar a number of years ago, and it was about a church plant. And they had... Um, um, you know, kind of a lot of people tripping over each other as they were doing their setup and takedown, as they were doing a kind of a, it's called church under the rim, where you're working in a gymnasium. Anyway, and, and somebody came in and saw how they were doing it. And they said, you know, we could probably come up with a more efficient system. And the guy says, we don't want an efficient system. We want people to work together. And when you have a whole bunch of people, it may not run and function as smoothly, but at least we're all doing it together. And that's what they were striving towards, is working together. You know, sometimes we get into the trap of, you know, if you want a job done right, you got to do it yourself. And you know what? The problem is, is that doing it right is not the goal. It's doing it together that's the goal. And so we want to be encouraging. All relationships are significant. Friendship, business, marriage, these key community building pieces. The foundation of when God designed us for community, he established the family. When Christ died, he established family, which was the church. It was all designed in this relational model. Because the guy in, in Ecclesiastes discovered, doing this stuff by myself for nobody is meaningless business. It's a waste of time. And the scripture goes on and it tells us that there's tons of benefits of being together. Talks about, you know, productivity, the whole idea of, you know, two people working together can get more done and accomplished. That there's mutual support that, it, that can take place. Is that if you fall down, I can help you up. I fall down, you can help me up. So there is mutual support that takes place. There's also companionships. It, talk, it talks about, you know, if uh, we're cold, we can huddle together and we can keep ourselves warm and that there is strength that that uh, one person can easily be overpowered two much more difficult and so the bible tells us that there is immense benefit that takes place from people being in community together and it goes on in this passage of scripture of talking about the significance of three that there is strength in community. I always find it interesting that this is one of, the, I find one of the most interesting passages of scripture from Matthew 18, 20, where it says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. I've always been fascinated with that because ultimately I know that the Bible promises me, it says it's never, he's never going to leave me, he's never going to forsake me, that his presence is guaranteed in my life, that I have God with me all the time. So why does God promise that where two or three are gathered, there he's in the midst? Because he's already promised that he's with me all the time. And so that I, I don't have to worry about not being in his presence because I'm always in his presence. So why does he say where two or three are gathered, he, he's there when he's already said that he's going to be there when there's one? This is a very important principle. The Bible teaches us that there is a special connection that happens between God and people together. That there is something, it says that God inhabits the praises of his people. That when there is a gathering of his people together, there is a special connection with God that takes place. And it cannot be experienced alone. That it is only experienced as we gather together. Uh, the psalmist says it, how good it is for brothers to dwell in unity, meet together together. 
oneness in Christ, that there is something that takes place. There is something mystical and beautiful that can happen when God's people get together. God wants a relationship with you. And he wants to bind us together in perfect harmony and perfect unity together. And so that's the significance of the three chords. That as we build relationships with one another in Christ, there is a bond that takes place that can accomplish so much. But I think at the core of what we're talking about today is, is that in faith circles, loneliness should not be a problem because we have God's presence and in pr the presence of others, there is a unity and beauty that takes place that takes away loneliness. So how does that take place? How does that place take place? You know, how do we step beyond the social isolation that is such a big part of our, we're losing friends, we're losing connection. How do we stop it? And, and uh, it's interesting because one of the things that we've noticed uh, as we've come out of COVID is, is that uh, I was just reading a, a blog post today and it says it seems that those that attended every week are now attending every other week. Uh, those that attended every other week are now attending once a month. It seems that our connections are starting to break down. So how do we start to break this problem of social isolation? The first thing that I want to suggest to you is, is that some of you just need to get found. You just need to get found. You're feeling isolated and you are feeling alone. And you need to get found. I, I got this phrase from um, a, a book. It was um, All I Ever Needed to Learn, I Learned in Kindergarten. I read this book years ago. And, and so this guy's watching from his window and there's kids playing hide and seek outside. And so as they're playing hide and seek, there's this one kid that is, is, has got hidden and he buried himself in some leaves in the front yard and nobody can find him. And the game is going on and on and it's starting to get dark and everybody's getting frustrated. And so he leaned out the window and he yelled at the kid, get found, kid, get found. <laughs> some of us just need to get found. We've been hiding. We've been keeping to ourselves. And it's time to step out and get found. Now, and this is hard. It's, it's hard to put yourself out. It's hard to kind of step out of your comfort zone and step into, um, and, and it really put yourself out there. And sometimes it doesn't go well and you have to keep trying. Many of us, you know, we, we try something once and it didn't quite go. Sometimes it takes a little bit more and, and it really needs to, to try to, you know, to get some of those connections. But it does take us stepping out and trying to get found. Uh, some, for some of you, you know what, you might also just need to get some help. Uh, some of the issues that uh, that surround, you know, the fact that the American government has put out a gigantic document about this shows us that this is a big problem. And sometimes you just need a little bit of extra help. You know, whether it's uh, uh, getting together with a friend or maybe seeking some more professional uh, help, whatever it is, sometimes you need a little bit of extra help. And so I would encourage you to do that whatever it takes for you to kind of get that next step. Create a culture of connection. We need to be creating a culture of connection, particularly within the church. That number one, we need to be, if, if somebody is trying to get find, found, find them. If they walk through the front doors, they're probably trying to be found. And so... 
go out of your way to make sure that they feel welcome. It may mean that, uh, you know what, uh, I remember hearing of one person that they always put supper or something on in a crock pot at home and their goal was to always invite somebody after church. That was what they did. And maybe we need to be a culture, uh, try to establish a culture of invitation, opening ourselves up. You know, some of the other side of it is, is that we also need to mentor and disciple people. You know what? We need to be trying to build connections with people. And sometimes there are those that are looking for people who are more spiritually mature in order to be able to have coffee with and discuss spiritual things. Open yourself up to being that kind of a welcoming, mentoring, discipling relationship. The Bible encourages us also to practice hospitality, that uh, we really do need to begin to try to use our homes as the basis for uh, meeting with people and encouraging people. But we really do need, in these days where loneliness is becoming epidemic, we need to get back to the fact that the scripture tells us better is two, better is connection, better is community. That that's why he established the church was so that we would be a community to support and encourage and bless one another so that there would be no one who would be all alone. It was the, one of the first problems, actually I think it was the first problem that was ever confronted in scripture it is not good for a person to be alone and scripture tells us better is two better is the connection with people better is community and so as we wrap things up today let me just encourage you if you're feeling lonely and you're feeling discouraged Number one, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that are experiencing that. But God has a remedy. Number one, he wants to be in a relationship with you. And Jesus invites you to come into a relationship with him. And you discover that you're never alone. But sometimes God also wants us to develop, actually he doesn't sometimes, he wants all of us to develop relationships with one another because that's the church. The church is to be the community of the found, encouraging one another and building one another. And so let's make sure that we start to go out of our way to make sure that the lost get found and that the found are brought into community. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you want to bring us into a relationship with you and that you don't want us to be alone. You want us to be brought into community with others. And so God, we pray that we would be able to um, build this community that, so that no one would be alone. So God, we pray that you would help us to be found, that you would help us to be able to be a welcoming and inviting environment for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This song talks about that there's joy in the house of the Lord. And that's what we want. We want the, play, the house of the Lord, the gathering of God's people together to be a place of joy. Let's sing it together.
God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our online service. If you'd like to join in on the conversation, if you're watching the YouTube premiere, uh, depending on what kind of device you have, it'll be either on the side or down below. And let's just encourage one another and bless one another. Maybe we can ask some questions about being in community and how we can do that better. Let's just encourage one another and let's uh, bless one another. God bless you. Hope that you have a wonderful week and we'll see you all next week.